Welcome to Electra Online. Here's an example problem that often causes a lot of confusion for students, so let's see what the best way is to handle something like this. We're told to find the displacement when you travel north 100 meters, then 120 meters in the direction 60 degrees east of north, and then 60 meters in the direction 30 degrees west of south. So what does that even mean? Well, first what we need is we need the compass directions. It's always good to draw those on your paper. So directly up is considered north, south is downward, to the right is east, and to the west, to the left is west. So it's always good to have that as a reference. Now notice that this is a bird's eye view. Imagine you're in the plane looking down, you're watching everything on the ground, and so those are the directions relative to where you are. You're facing north this way, south is down, East is to the right, west is to the left. So the first travel is 100 meters directly north. So let's pick a point, the starting point. It's right here. And we go 100 meters directly north. So from there to there, that's 100 meters. And you go north. That's your first travel. Next, it's 60 degrees east of north. So if north is this way, then 60 degrees is this way. So it's an angle of 60 degrees like this. East in the east of the direction from the northern reference point and that will then be a travel of 120 meters which is therefore in this direction so there's 120 meters and this angle is 60 degrees relative to the north and then finally another 60 meters 30 degrees west of south if we were to go straight south it would be like this and west of south 30 degrees would be in this direction this is an angle of 30 degrees and we travel a distance of 60 meters there we go and there's your finishing point so let's use a different color there's your finishing point and so the displacement would then be from here from the starting point to the finish point this here would be your displacement let's call that s and the question is what is that equal to in essence we can think of this as being three vectors we can think of this as vector a this is vector b and this is vector c and so therefore the displacement vector is simply the sum of a plus b plus c and if we're going to add vectors together we need to add their x and y components now yes i did say x and y components what we're going to do is once we have the direction correctly we can then imagine that this is the x direction or the y direction and this is the x direction so now we're going to convert to this coordinate system once we've drawn the schematics on the paper or in this case on the board so let's find the x and y components of each of the three vectors in the case of vector a notice there's no x component but there is a y component so this is equal to 0 in the i direction plus 100 in the j direction now for component for vector b B has two components. There's a component in the x direction, there's a component in the y direction, and it's not a bad idea to draw those two components. So notice here, this would be a component in the x direction, B sub x, and a component in the y direction, B sub y. And notice we have this vector, this, this uh, angle right here, which means that this angle here is 30 degrees. So it doesn't matter which angle you use, a 60 degree angle or a 30 degree angle, but make sure you use the right trigonometric functions when you do so. If we're going to use the 60 degree angle, so I'm just going to show you how to do that. So here's the 60 degree angle. Notice that the B sub X component is really opposite to that angle. In essence, this here is the B sub X component, which is opposite to the angle of 60 degrees so if we're going to find the x component this would be equal to 120 times the sine of 60 degrees or the cosine of 30 degrees whichever angle you want to use and that would be in the i direction and then plus 120 times the cosine of 60 degrees in the j direction this shows you, depending upon which angle you use, that you don't necessarily automatically asso associate the cosine to the x component and the sine to the y component. It really depends upon how things are drawing and which angle you use. So I did this kind of intentionally. We could have used a 30 degree angle, but I'm going to use the 60 degree angle. So in this case, 
Let's calculate this out. 60, take the sine of that, times 120. That's uh, 100, let me try that again here. 60, take the sine, times 120. That's 103.9, let's call it 104. So B is equal to 104 in the I direction, and the cosine of 6 is 1 half, that would be plus 60 in the J direction. So now we have our A vector, and we have our B vector, we still need our C vector. Again, not a bad idea to draw the X and Y components. So this here would be our C sub Y, and this here would be our C sub X. There we go. And again, notice that the Y component is adjacent to the 30 degree angle, and the X component will be opposite to the 30 degree angle. So this here would be our C sub X. And so therefore, again, be very careful about the trigonometric functions. So you can say that your C vector is equal to, that would be a magnitude of 60, right? 60, right there, 60. And the X component will be opposite to the angle 30. That would be the sine of 30 degrees in the I direction. That would be plus, ooh, now be careful here. It's in a negative direction. So we need a negative sign here. Negative 60 times a sign of 30 degrees and the x component that's x and then the y component is also negative so let's make this negative negative 60 times the y component is adjacent that would be the cosine of 30 degrees and let's go over here and finish that up so that means the c uh, c is equal to the x component sine of 30 is one half that would be 30 in the i direction and 30 take the cosine 30 take the cosine of that uh, times 60 and we get uh, about 52 uh, that would be again a minus 30 and a minus 52 in the j direction so now I have all three vectors and we realize that the resultant vector is simply going to be the resultant or the sum of the three vectors so we have s is equal to a plus b plus C, it's not a bad idea to write it vertically to make it easier to see how to add them up. The A vector is going to be 0i plus 100j. The B vector is going to be 104i plus 60j. And finally, the C vector is going to be minus 30i and minus 52j. When we add all that together, subtract 30 from 104, that would be 74i, subtract 52 from 60, that's 8, plus 100, that would be plus 108j. And so that is the final displacement vector. And does that make sense based upon what we see? 74 in the i direction, 108 in the j direction. Eh, looks fairly good, fairly comfortable that that is probably the right answer if I didn't make any mistakes. And that is how it's done.